Hello, everyone. My name is Gus. Hi, I'm Woody. Today we have uh, maybe, perhaps, the final episode on the saga of our adventures with Dan since Abaco and the you know the whole process that we had with that. If you <coughs> are new tuning into this episode, back in December we uh, traveled to Abaco for our, like our yearly you know trip to the Crystal Caves, and Woody had an incident, and we had to call Dan Divers Alert Network to help us with you know finding a chamber and going through you know basically the emergency procedures and some things didn't go as smooth as we hoped for and we talked about him in an episode and after that episode went live two things became evident number one there are things with it wrong and we addressed those on episode two with gareth Locke. so we brought in a safety expert and tell him everything we did and he reacted to everything we did and suggested some things we could have done better Agreed. hopefully everyone who watched that learned something so they don't make the same mistakes we made right mm -hmm. and the second thing that came out of that is that People wanted Dan to chime in, Dan to defend themselves. Like, not that they had to, but they were like, but Dan, why did that, why did that not go as smooth? Like, what happened? What happened with the whole, we call you and we send in the Navy SEALs to rescue people? Like, <laughs> how most people think Dan will behave or react if they have an emergency, right? So they asked us to, number one, get the recordings, right? The transcripts of the conversations we have with Dan. And number two, meet with them, which we were lucky that Bill... Siffle, the CEO of Dan, was open to meeting with us. He invited us to Dan headquarters in North Carolina in Raleigh and said, come here. We'll do a round table. We'll talk about it. We'll have the transcripts. Let's just see what went wrong so we can improve for everyone overall. And that's what we want. And for those of you who are saying, like, they're only changing because you guys are following. And... and so so that, so what? No, that was great. That's a perfect introduction. Um, a couple of just other small little intro parts yeah. before we get into this. Um, <clears throat> number one, I don't want to say I'm their favorite between you and I, <laughs> but I did get a beautiful shirt and a hat. No, just kidding. That's Here, true. here's the thing. I am really pleased, and and our goal it really was singular. You see, there's no point in going back. You see, you did this wrong or you did that wrong. I wanted to focus on the incident is over. Yeah. Can we improve and can they improve and can we help make a process better for the dive world? I think it's extremely important for every diver to have Dan insurance. And I'm telling you that after this meeting. Yeah. So for all of those, I'm canceling my Dan pop. I would not do that, especially after you hear about some of the some things. of the great ideas that they are now doing, and I think maybe some of them they were already thinking about. So yeah. whatever the out, whatever that is, the outcome is some really good things are happening. Before we, we move forward, and, though, and, by the way, because I think it's important that we clear this up, we're not being paid by Dan. No, we're not sponsored by Dan. No. Dan had nothing to do. This is an unscripted conversation between us. And to be 100% transparent, we, I don't want to say beg, but we asked to record our meeting multiple times and they declined. I mean, they yeah. had. And they, I think it's good that they declined. Yeah. And thinking back with it, it was very open that way. It was very sure. professional. Unscripted. And, and what, when, when you cut me off, the, here's the other thing that I want to say. And I really enjoyed the conversation with Bill. And here's why. Both of us, meaning Dive Talk and Bill representing Dam, were willing to say we could have done that better. Of course. We we made listen, after talking with Bill, we made some mistakes. Sure. And in what we talk about, it's gonna help, I think, prevent others from making those same mistakes because even though we did make some mistakes. I wouldn't have known not to make those mistakes. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's kind of like, yeah, we made the mistakes, but wow. I Everyone would have made I didn't know mistakes. that, yeah. but now I do. And now Dan's going to make help make sure others don't make the same mistake. And I that openness, Bill, I'm here to – I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. I do. You see I'm wearing a hat of, of Dan. Yeah. And the goal, again, guys, is – of this entire follow-up at this point is let's just make diving safer for everybody. 
That's right. That's all we care about. So let's get started, okay? Because I, I took notes. Yeah. Because I wanted to be clear that we represent the right things that are changing. Yeah, yeah. There are five specific things. Five for specific that we spe- came up, we came out of the meeting with, and a sixth kind of general. A comment. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. This is very important. You need to keep Dan informed of everything that is going on with you and especially Mm -hmm. true if the provider tells you an alternative to get you treatment that is outside of what Dan is working on for you. Let's that, dive into that. Dive into that because I want to be clear. That means you literally need to pick the phone back up and call yeah. Dan and say, listen, they just walked in the room and said, Dan's not going to cover this for you. Or we can't get you transported. Or we just this hospital will not cover no. you. Yeah. Or we just talked to Dan and they said, no, you need to call Dan. Right. Is all trust I'm no saying one. is I would not trust that. <laughs> it's hard to accept right. for me. Really? Can there be professional providers out there, doctors, nurses, yeah. institutions that would lie and by to, the way, for monetary purposes? And what I'm telling you is, without giving specific names, the yes. answer to that is yes. Well, but sadly. But, but let, let's just be clear. This is not about the people in the Bahamas and the hospitals in the Bahamas. Like we went into many, many examples in many, many countries of how they take advantage of that. And basically it sounds something like this. Let's say you need to be transported on a taxi to the, to the compression chamber, right? The operators have acquaintances, friends, whatever, partners in crime, however you want to call it. (laughs) They will say, Hey, Call me to transport anyone who needs it because I will take them to the chamber that will charge triple. So you get a hookup and I get a hookup. But like, of course that happens everywhere. It's not just in the Bahamas or Mexico or whatever. It happens in many, many countries, okay, where people will literally walk into your room and say, hey, we just talked to Dan. They said you should go with this guy to whatever. And you'll be like, okay, and then ju- jump on the transport and then get in trouble. And by the way, just to add a little bit more clarity to what you said, I think this was the the one area where Bill was kind of like, okay, help us improve our exactly where I was help going. us yes. improve our 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 process and our procedure. And what I told him was, I said, look, I think that Dan's operating procedures are heavily focused on the victim, right? They're heavily focused on the victim for a reason. The victim is the one whose life is in danger. They're the ones that need the treatment. So of course. The operating procedure should be focused on making sure the victim, you know, survives or mi- minimize the, the damage to them. But what I noticed is that none of the operating procedures were focused on the body, on the person helping the victim. So for me, I had no idea. Like there was one, you know, time that he said something like, you know, like in our example, we went to the hospital in the Bahamas and they're like, we don't accept then. We don't accept your insurance. You have to pay out of pocket. That's what they told us. So they were like, why didn't you call us back and tell us that they told you they don't accept that? We would have gotten involved and fight it out so they accepted that. But how would I know? And I felt like, you know, this is one of those things that when a body calls you, Dan, you should be like, by the way, take care of the victim for you. Now you, let me prepare you. They're going to say this. They're going to say that. Please keep us in the loop. Like, We've seen this before. We know how it works. It might be your first rodeo to the to the body calling. In that, in that case, it was me. This might be your first rodeo, but this is what we do for a living. This is how it works. So there was like zero preparation and focus on the body. And they said, absolutely, that's true. We're going to change that. And they're going to change it by, by, I believe this is what Bill said, by putting in an upfront yep. conversation. Listen. Up front in the conversation, you as the helper, buddy, whatever you want to call it, you need to keep us informed of anything going on. If you're getting ready to get transported, call us back. If they tell you, nope, Dan's not covering it, call us back. And I I wondered why. Besides just the fact that Dan knows, great, they know. I still got to get transported. No. 
Dan could be literally working on it. Yeah. In getting ready to get you that transportation and that provider didn't really want that. And the reason there are kickbacks guys, yeah. they're doctors, everybody's on the take. I mean, in, I, and they are so sneaky. With it's it. unbelievable how the process can go. And I, I said, really, Bill, are they really getting yeah. kickbacks? He goes, Yes. And there was another example they said. It's like they may not go around you like if Dan is working on something, but they will ask you and it's like, hey, there's a local company who can do it. Do you want us to talk to them and try to see if they can make it work? And what they said is that if they do that, then that local company can block the airspace. Literally like, hey, don't allow anyone in. So even if Dan was like, we'll pay whatever amount. Sorry, the airport. You know, the airspace has been locked for an emergency because the local companies have that local connection and can do it faster. So it's like so and, sneaky. There's so many different ways. And then by miracle, mess up with you. when you whip out your American Express card and you use their provider, right. oh, you know, we do have lights on the runway. <laughs> I forgot. Here's the light switch. Right. It's just that bad. Okay. So improvement by Dan there. Yeah. When we learned. Right. We learned. And they learn. Right. And we think people great. watching this will know now that, hey, yeah. you know, keep them informed. Especially, I think, for me, as a body, I was completely ill-prepared. I just called them, and everything was about, let's get Woody better. Let's do this. Let's do that. At no point, no one talked to me about, like, how about you? You're also responsible for some things. Let's talk to you about it. So that was good. But the second one is second also one. connected to it. Number two. D Bill wanted me to quote this. Okay, so I, I'm reading you exactly how he wanted this to be said. There are multiple, right? That's what he said. Multiple ways Dan has to make payments to providers. So b before you jump in, yeah, if you get to a provider and all of the sudden, even if Dan's involved, the provider decides. When you get there, dying, needing to get treatment, we're not going to accept Dan's payment or Dan's guaranteed payment. Remember, you're desperate and you're trying to get treatment. So they got you and they know that. Remember that you call Dan because they have, I'm not, without, he told me to say multiple ways to get that provider to give you treatment at that point rather yeah. than you having to put up eighteen thousand dollars on your credit card thank goodness i had american express to do that right what i what i would again it fits into number one on the spot right there dan they're not accepting they're not taking your this they're not taking that yeah what would have happened from there is what it sounds like is Dan would have figured out a way to get them paid right outside of my credit card because that provider said, we definitely don't accept Dan. Now, here's what was even trickier, and then you can jump in. Yeah. Dan told us to go there. That's right. So this is how it's really tricky. <laughs> Dan's like, they know you're coming. We, it's, we got Okay, it. we got it. So you're like, in your mind, you're like, great, yeah. I'm going to get there and they're going to bring me into the emergency room, get me treated, get me hydrated, get me on oxygen, get me in the high hyperbaric chamber. Yeah. So even then, where Dan says it's set up at a provider, even then, when Bill acknowledged, even then they can, for lack of a better word, they squeeze their mind. you. You know what? We knew you were coming, Yeah. but we're not taking Dan. So you right. better have a credit card. This is one of those where I push back. You know, a bill because he said, you know, this was basically something you guys did wrong. That's what he insinuated is when I, they I told you guys with them either on this. Yeah. When they told you guys that they wouldn't accept Dan, you should have not accepted that. And I'm like, I think that because all I'm thinking is like we already went through it. They're like, I cannot go back and change it. But can people watching this video learn from this and how can they avoid the same mistake? I told him, I think that for anyone watching this video, it's unrealistic to ask them to not to basically tell the other company when their body's dying no you will accept that because what bill said is what we do with this hospital not just that other companies do is we have a guarantee of payment it's basically like um 
like I owe you, like don't worry, take him in, we'll pay you, trust me, we'll pay you, you know, something like that. And what they did is they had a guarantee of payment with this hospital, and apparently, again, this is all speculation, apparently, allegedly, they changed their mind. When you walked in, they were like, eh, maybe not. Maybe we don't trust Dan. And they told us- They actually said, we never take payment from you. We don't accept Dan. Here, don't, we don't accept Dan. We don't accept your health care at all. <laughs> they, that's right. They didn't accept my- We don't accept United it. United Healthcare. They and what Bill said, what Bill said is that you should have pushed back. You should have called us and say, hey, these guys are not accepting it. And we would have found a way to pay. Wire transfer, credit card, Dogecoin. We will figure out how to do it, but we would, you should have called us back. But I'm like, look, that's unrealistic. When I go to a store and I try to pay with an American Express or Visa or whatever, if they tell me we don't accept that, I'm not going to call American Express and be like, hey, by the way, I'm here at Bed Bath & Beyond and they're not accepting my American. Like, who does that? If you go to a store and they tell you we don't take that method of payment, you either move on with another method of payment, which is what we did, or you leave without what you're trying to buy. In our case, life-saving services for you, which means that was off the table. We couldn't leave. We were in need of care now. I was in sweat. My blood pressure right. was dropping, which will happen because you're, you got, it's part of DCS. Yeah. Like, we don't accept Dan, and I had to pay to get yeah. in. You pay now. You'll get in that emergency room. Or leave. And the second I got in the emergency room, by the way, the treatment was five world stars. class. Yeah. Five star. That that they were amazing. On. So that so. is one of the mistakes we made that I disagree with. I was like, okay, I guess technically. I, I disagreed with them on that as well. Technically, I agree that we did that wrong, meaning ignoring the fact that they said we don't accept that and moving on to another method of payment, which was the credit card. Technically, that was wrong, but who would have known that that was even an option? Unless you educate people and let people know that if they say they don't take it, call them back. There's a chance that they can get paid somehow, back alley, Bitcoin, whatever. They will find a way to pay it. Who knows that? Yeah, we and, didn't know that. And, and Dan does educate and tell people through articles that they've posted in the past. I, I want to be fair, but who's digging up articles on this stuff in the moment and remembering some article published five years ago. Yeah. And I told Dan, I'll let me take some of these articles and summarize them yeah, yeah. in a one sentence, easy to understand for most people. So they're actually reading. No one's yeah. reading them uh, that stuff otherwise. So anyway, okay, let's move on. I think but one thing I, before we move on, last thing, because I know that the keyboard commandos, the keyboard warriors of Facebook are already flying, probably. are out there saying, you guys are idiots. You should have known that if they decline you, I, you, I you should have called idiots. back at four in the morning and have no, Dan but, find a way to do it. But let me save I'm the sure. typing. I, I acknowledge that we're idiots. Now, you but, don't even have to say it. But I'm just it's saying, good. because they say that, because they say that what happened in the video number one, what happened to us in Abaco, basically, which was video number one is all the facts of what happened. We, that's just one side of the story. We just did it for clicks and nothing else. We threw Dan under the bus on purpose because that has more clicks or views somehow. Because they're experts also in YouTube. They're experts in Dan and they're also experts they're in YouTube. Better they at, don't have a channel. And Nobody watches their dive. videos. I but, know they're better at diving than us. But that's somehow they are experts on YouTube because if we yes. recorded a video <laughs> where Dan came mm -hmm. in with an Apache helicopter and picked you up and took you to a, chamber and did a five-star treatment of you that somehow that wouldn't have gotten views absolutely it would have been it's only if they didn't do you know if we made up a lies yes about dan you but know both because, sides yeah. were not perfect and we're we're giving you the improvements it's oh, great clowns. we are helping effectuate change at dan and some of these things they were already working on and that's the only thing the only comments that i'm going to respond to are the ones that are like that's a really cool idea. Do you know this about it or that? Right. B move forward. Number three. Uh-huh. I love this one. Mm. Bill, I told you I love this one. Dan is in the process of making an emergency action plan assistance mechanism tool. That's great. And we called. I just We both just called. Yeah, I spoke. She's awesome from Joanne from Dan. And she gave me a few things that I want to I want to tell you. Number one, yeah. 
They already, if you make an emergency action plan for somewhere you're going, they will review the emergency action plan and you can email it to risk mitigation at dan.org. Right. Risk mitigation at dan.org. But what she said is, we're not going to know exactly your specific situation. Right now, the way it's set up is it's just a general review of it's an audit. A what should be in yeah. an emergency action plan. But here's where they're going. And I applaud. I love that. I'm going to use it every time. Yeah. What they are building, it's coming. They're working on it. So I don't have an exact time frame. In the app, which is awesome. So you'll download Dan's app. Um, they will be able to, you'll basically be able to put in their information about where you're going and when you're going there. And it will give you very specific information yeah. about your destination, such as where's the nearest hospital? Where's the nearest hyperbaric chamber? Do they have an emergency transportation available at that destination? And other information that then you can use to very tailor your emergency action plan. Yeah. Now that is awesome because let's take my situation. Our situation. Yeah. If I would have put this in, Abacos, Bahamas, they don't have a hospital. They don't have a hyperbaric chamber. And they would have some warnings on this emergency action plan. We've had issues. We've had problems with transportation companies. They're known to be, I don't think they would put this in there, but they would be like, We've had problems there. You're now warned. She wanted me to say this. You're now warned as a diver. It doesn't mean you shouldn't go there. But at least now you know I'm going there knowing we may not be able to help you as Dan at that destination. I think she said Bikini Toll is one of those. Bikini Atoll. So, yeah. Bikini Atoll. That's what she mentioned. There are places in this world where divers go. There's not even people to rip you off. Like, there's literally no options. You go in the middle of nowhere. So Bikini Atoll is one of those. Marshall Islands, yeah. So she said, in that case, what would you do? Well, you need to... You have to know. You need to bring your own stuff. I Do I have Jesus emergency not. oxygen? Do I have a first aid kit? Right. Do I have a an AED with me? Can I yeah, you go keep fully myself not. alive? But what I wanted to say is the, the reason of why this came up during our conversation was Dan, for years now, has had the ability to help you make your emergency action plan where you're going. The idea is if you're a proactive diver, you go into their website. There is a um, like an EAP kind of template and you say, I'm going to be here and this is what I'm going to do if this happens. And you basically fill up this form, this template. You can email it to them, as you mentioned, risk mitigation at Dan.org. They'll look at it and say, okay, after looking at your plan, I think you should have more information on this or you should, you know, this is blank right here. Make sure you add that, whatever. It's, a, it's an assessment. It's an audit of your plan. That's what that service is about. What, what I mentioned to Bill was, I said, Bill, what I would like to see is go one step beyond that because this requires someone, especially if you're a new diver, this is tough. This requires someone to fill this EAP, this emergency action plan, and email it to you guys. What if I'm a complete idiot? I don't know even how to how to make an emergency action plan. Can you provide something like the Department of State does? And I mentioned that example specifically where you say, hey, I'm going to whatever, Mogadishu, and what should I know? And then the yeah. Department of State will tell you like, well, don't go into these neighborhoods, be yeah. careful, or it will straight up tell you, do not go there. Don't go there. There's no American embassy. No one will help you if you get in trouble, right? Dan should have that for pop, at least for popular destination. I get it that you can't just have somebody's backyard in Haiti as a location and a plan for that, but have the most common destinations. Abaco should be there. I'm going to Abaco. What should I know? Here's your emergency action plan. Here are your operators. Here's what you should know. And that is all driven by data. People that have gone there, they have experienced things, have the same for Cozumel and Cancun Absolutely. and all of these places. So now I can just go, I'm going to Cancun, here's your EAP, print it out or have it in the app, and now you have it rather than you filling it up, mailing it in. Like Because most people, if you're like me, you'll remember this five minutes before you leave. 
to go, go catch the flight. <laughs> exactly. You know, you don't have time to be emailing stuff and responding and, you know. Yeah. But this is going to be great. I yeah. Mean, when they have the this app and you'll have that info, that's going to be great. Okay. Proactive. Moving on. Big one. Also, in an emergency situation, Dan will no longer require these long emergency forms to fit be to fly. Out. Yeah, fit to fly. You know, forms well, or whatever. Well, the fit to fly yeah. you may still have to do. At if he said mm-hmm. out of fairness, because they made otherwise they may not be able to. Companies require that's yeah, what he they, said, they, yeah. So that not may then. happen, but they won't. They won't. The actual form is that. There's these humongous forms they made. We talked about it in episode one. They make you fill out a claims form. Yeah, we talked okay? about it in episode one. It's so just a bunch gone, of questions. I, literally, I was on my phone. Your employer. I'm sweating. I'm literally going, passing in and out of consciousness. 401k contributions. And I'm like, what was your wife's first job from her previous mayor? I mean, like, what? First car you ever owned. Bill said, literally, if I find out. They make somebody made you do that again. <laughs> they will be fired. Yeah. Right. So that That's is great. over. Well done. That's great. Number five. All right. Big one. Yeah. Dan will be on every single call between the member and the transportation company. What used to happen. And I didn't even know that, by the way. Yeah. I got to be honest with you. I didn't really realize when Dan's like, Okay, we're transferring transferring you to our, our travel transportation assist. or travel, travel assist. assist. Yeah, yeah. I thought, oh, it's just another division yeah. of Dan. It's Joanne. It's a complete independent Separate company. provider. Right. And they would no longer be on the call. So the problem with that is Dan may not have any idea what that transportation company told you or what they're doing. Well, they're awesome. Separate yeah. transcripts. When we looked at the transcripts, Dan's transcripts came rather quickly. The transportation transcripts took forever. I did yeah. not. Why? Because they're a di- totally different company. Right. Finally, they got them. So, guess what? Dan will be there with you holding your hand. When the transportation company tells you, we're coming, but it's $21,000, Dan will be like, what? Or Dan will be like, <laughs> okay, let, here's what? how we're going to pay for it. Right. Do you know how much of a worldwide massive change that's going to be for yeah, all huge. of its members? Come well, because on. we I got mean, we got Dan, the transcripts. This is awesome. Even on the even on the transcripts, we got internal transcripts, which were cool. They were yeah. super transparent. They showed us calls between Dan and the transportation company. Yep. Where now we're playing a game of telephone, where it's like, well, he said, she said, he, I think he said that, and then the transportation company, okay, I guess I'll call and verify. It's just too much work, too much he said, she said. Now everybody's going to be on the same calls and everyone's going to get the best possible service for the victim. I mean, and they can, Dan will keep it moving forward. Yeah. If the transportation company does what they did to us, where the doctor literally walked in and said, "There, Dan's not providing transportation. I just spoke with them. Yeah. Did he speak with them? I'm just saying. Right. Remember we beginning of the show there are people that are not honest shocking right dan's there and they're going to be able to make sure you get that transportation so that is really really critical but the the sixth point if you will is that i know what some of these things are but i bill doesn't want us to announce them yet right dan is working on some other very beneficial big things for member benefits. And he told us some of them. They're yeah. awesome. But he, he's very upfront. He's like, the reason I don't want you to announce them yet is it's complicated. I've got to get it worked out. And I don't want to promise something that could fall apart and I can't deliver. I like the fact that he was like, you know, some of this stuff we've been pondering over time and thinking about ways to make it better. And then when you guys went through what you went and, you know, you provided the video and all of that. It kind of like hit the turbo button. Like we guys, yeah. we got to do this. It's, like awesome. it's been a long time coming. So that's that's a great change. That's a great change. Yeah. Now I am really happy. Yeah. Like I'm actually really happy that this happened to me. And that's not. Oh, you're bragging. What you or you think you're some special guy? Well, I believe in karma, and I told Bill this, and he yeah. said, "You know what? I believe in karma as well. I believe things happen for a reason." And I think that we now have this 
privilege called Dive Talk. And I've said this, and Gus has as well, many times before. I want to use this privilege that you've given us in the right way. I want to use it to help divers with being safer divers, mainly through entertainment, because you won't watch our videos if we don't entertain you. I hope this one, I hope you'll watch this one. I don't know if it was entertaining or not, but we know that. And, and now... This is the best so far, I think, result of something happening to one of us. Maybe yeah. it got more attention, not from Dan in the emergency situation, but from everybody. Yeah. Because we're dive talk. And so what? That's wonderful. I, I will admit, though, I am going to miss the conspiracies. Like that was I don't I, I hate that them. was my favorite I don't want to part read them anymore. That was my favorite part. People would send me PMs, you know, yeah. like private messages, like, "Hey, I heard. I won't tell anybody. You yeah. can tell me. I heard they threatened you with a lawsuit. It's a and that's garbage. why you haven't. That's why you haven't released the video, <laughs> guys. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm. I'm gonna. But I want you all to know, never. And the one warriors. single time. And we talked to Bill on multiple emails and yeah. on the phone. Did the word, yeah. not once, yeah. did the word lawsuit come up from either no. party? And frankly, That's not what it's, about. it's like, okay, what do you think a lawsuit would have accomplished in this situation right now? Mm-hmm. Horrible results. Right. And a lot of money for lawyers. But it never even came up. Mm-hmm. Like so, these conspiracy theories are I garbage. Mean, you did get a free polo shirt and a hat. Yeah, so I did get. I got that yeah. going. And I am, so I'm I really happy. We'll and I really of... thank you know, I thank everybody for the concern. <laughs> I'm really glad we learned a lot. I'm really glad that Dan is implementing these changes. And let's keep diving, and use their services. I'm going to post an article that I rewrote from them. I said to Bill, Bill, here's an article where I don't remember the exact date. It's not in front of me. I think it was like 2016 where you, you said, you know, we've written an article where we already talked about these places that are not honest or yeah, that you yeah, may yeah. not be able to get treatment. And I said, send me the article. Yeah. And I, and I, this, I was critical to Bill. He's like, you know, what do you think of it? I said, it, it's horrible. <laughs> I mean, no one's going to read it. Pass. It's literally, he laughed. Uh, he yeah, laughed yeah. and he said, okay. I said, Bill, will you let me yeah. take this article and rewrite it in like a bullet point format yeah, super for people simple. like me? That Summarize. I have the attention span of a fifth grader, fourth right. grader. Yeah. And now I'll read it because it's 10 simple points of right. what you're really trying to say. I did that. I then emailed it back to Bill. I said, are you... Can I post this on our Dive Talk community uh, tab? Yeah. And he read it and he's like, I love it. Thank you for checking with me. Yeah. Post it. Yeah. And I will then link people to the article. Right. So I'm going to do my summary. Then I'm going to give you the link to their article. If you have, you know, good glasses and you're feeling really tired at night and you can't quite sleep. No. In In sun, yeah. I know. And that's that's being rude. Bill's not going to like this part. (laughs) They want to educate people yeah. but what 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 the secret sauce we told them of dive talk is we entertain mm. and we make things simple and funny and scary and then we're able to educate out of fairness to dan there they wouldn't really be able to do that but i'm going to put it out there one more time to dan We'll make you. We'll make videos for you. Let no, us in. Okay. Please they, let us in a little bit. Their videos. They are have serious. a basement. They no, have a basement. They have a serious with an channel. Ama- no, they want to talk about science and stuff. We're I will wear the pinkest definitely pink not clarif- they've ever seen no. on video not, one. Dan videos by Dive Talk. Okay, we're not qualified. Uh, but no, I am sure uh, the uh, cave commandos and the you know keyword warriors will come in and Maybe. you know keep on. Whatever. Uh, Keep on, keep on uh, feeding conspiracies. Just send them to me. I like it. I enjoy the conspiracies. I don't want them. Send them no, to Goss. Please. And then I already yeah. tried to save you that, you know, I'm really shocked. You're How an instructor money? trainer. You're an idiot. You should have known. 
I know I'm an idiot, and I know I'm a horrible instructor. I know I'm a bad diver. Yeah. But what I do know is this: Woody came out thirsty. You should have known he had these. You yes. purposely dehydrated yourself because you don't have a P valve. You're an idiot. You caught me. <laughs> Listen. Oh my what, god. Here's what I do know, though. That I do know. I do know this. Mm. Um. I don't want. I don't want people to go through what I went through because until you're in that situation, you can be all the keyboard warrior that you want. Yeah. But it was really difficult to figure out what was going on with me. Yeah. To the point where I'm like, I'm starving. I want my steak. I'm totally fine to do we call Dan back? No, they just told us they. Sp- All of these things are easy to keyboard warrior, of course, and they're yeah. not necessarily that easy to deal with. And I hope these things that I would like to think we helped effectuate, right, are now going to make diving safer for the world. That's well, and it. the uh, the other thing I think that, that was good, and we we can wrap up with this is for the I don't know how many thousands of comments it seems like saying like this is what's wrong with the American healthcare system. <laughs> Right? It's like, guys, this happened in the Bahamas. They had nothing to do with I the love U.S. That that like, funny. in my country in Europe, it would have been free. Okay, okay but well, you were not in Europe. Like, bad. I don't Bahamas. understand the comment. Like, it, okay, if you were in the Bahamas, I don't care where you're from. It would have been the same exact situation. But the funny thing about it, or not the funny thing, but the clarifying thing is that what happened to you in the Bahamas or what happened to us in the Bahamas happens in a bunch of other places. So this is not like, don't go to the Bahamas because they don't know whether, no, no, no. This happens in many, many countries. We just need to be informed. I can't wait to go back to Abaco, by the way. People are like, how is that mentally, you know, PTSD or I cannot wait to go back. Yeah, my PTSD is like, I'm itching a lot more to go back. Absolutely. Let's 100%. go back. And not only and now when I go back, I'm going to have exactly the no if something did happen again. Right. And um, will I hydrate better? Yeah. Sure. Did I even know I was not hydrating? No. I know I wasn't consciously that morning. I'm gonna, I'm not drinking a thing. How about drinking that? Drinking when you're I'm thirsty. Not, That's you not good. I'm going to drink. I'm not going to drink because I don't have a pee valve. You're going to wait till you're thirsty to drink? What are you doing? I thought you were an instructor. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna wait till you're hungry to eat are you are you stupid that yes but that is the, <laughs> that is the hardest part about dive talking sometimes it's just i i just would not type comments like this to people like yeah wait you didn't know that you didn't you didn't know that you know if you don't have a p-valve that's gonna force you not to drink and i i know that's why you did Increases it increases dcs by 57 percent oh my everyone God. knows that you must have been you. Um, anyway, the point is, in a lot of ways, the meeting with Dan confirmed what we talked about in episode one, which is things didn't go as smooth as they went. Some people, some things went wrong on purpose or not on purpose, but they went wrong. Some things went well, right? And you shouldn't cancel Dan or look, if you are using dive assurance, there's other companies then just keep you. Don't cancel your dive insurance. I'm not, this is not like quit what you're doing and go sign up for Dan. No, if you don't want to use Dan because you have like in Europe, they have like some kind of European thing, do that, you know, have European insurance, whatever that is. If you're, if you like dive assurance, which is one of the competitors of Dan, I think they're smaller, but they're great. If you love them, stick with them, have something because this can happen to everyone. And I think Gareth did a good job on the last episode where he talked about, I don't know if he said this in camera or before or after, because we talked to him before and after we filmed, he said, look, I think people, you know, give this being bent thing too much of a, like, uh, they, they elevated, like, this is so bad. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think about being bent DCS, decompression sickness and, and illness. I see it as, like a basketball player getting a an ankle injury, sprained ankle, or a knee replacement. You know, if you're playing football and shoulder yeah. thing, it's like it doesn't mean you did anything. It's wrong. an injury from the activity that you do. Yep. If you do diving and you're doing some, you know, deep dives and whatever, at some point, 
not someone's fault. You didn't do anything. I'm sure basketball players don't want to sprain their ankle. I'm sure they stretch. I'm sure they warm up. I'm sure they did the same thing they've been doing for thousands of games. Yeah. But that one day, they landed weird and sprained their ankle. That one day, something happened and you got bent. Crazy. We'll never know exactly what it was. We'll never know if it was dehydration, the fact that you ate whatever horrific thing you ate for breakfast that day, which is typically what you Cinnamon eat. Cinnamon Pop-Tart. Right? Oh. Which was delicious. And Oreos. Um, it, you know, who knows? I Nobody knows to... because you eat that in the other thousands of times that we've done together. And who doesn't? Nothing changed. Nothing was out of the ordinary. Yeah. That was just the day Woody landed wrong and sprained his ankle. In a way. I appreciate you saying that. I think it's yeah. true. I mean, you know I dive a very conservative profile on my computer. Absolutely do every stop. And we even did more. And who knows what happened. But um, with that said, the only thing I'll end with is... Um, but do you have this in pink? Okay. It, it anyway, if, so you miss, if you miss episode two with Garrett Locke, I'm going to leave it right here. Go check it out. We talked about all the things we did wrong, including... Ordering a steak, well done. That's still the worst thing that was done in the whole trip. Butterfly. We'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.